looking at the heart of a new machine, a machine of the 21st century, a living machine. In fact, these plants at artificial pools in a greenhouse in Providence, Rhode Island, may be the best hope we have for keeping our water safe to drink and cleaning our polluted rivers, lakes, and coastlines. This is what the wastewater looks like when it comes into our system, and this is what it looks like four days later. Plants, algae, sunlight, fish, even snails. They're the surprisingly powerful weapons that biologist John Todd is using in a visionary new technology. This may not look like a pollution treatment plant, but it is. It can clean everything from cancer-causing chemicals in our water to toxic waste. And it does it ecologically, using nature's own biological systems. When I realized that, although I've worked with water all my life, that the state of our water was not good, I began to look at the conventional waste treatment industry and discovered that it doesn't do a terrific job of cleaning up water and it uses quite a few hazardous chemicals in the process. From Santa Monica Bay in Los Angeles to Boston Harbor, the evidence is all around us. Many experts believe we may never reclaim our polluted waters using the conventional treatment technology. It is expensive and may never be able to achieve the highest water quality standards. That really meant finding a dramatically new solution, of which this is one of the pioneering examples that you're seeing here. The solution is a brilliant design of ecological engineering. It involves creating an environment that gives nature a chance to use its own biology to purify polluted water, a machine of living organisms. The system begins here, in the algae room, where bacteria and algae begin the cleansing process. Sludge and toxic substances are removed by other natural processes in the indoor marshland. And in the final stage, the water circulates in what is known as the fish room filled with fish and plants that act as a final filter. Polluted water enters the greenhouse here and flows into these large pools where sunlight, bacteria and algae begin breaking down the pollutants, actually turning them into the nutrients on which these plants thrive. We try and make sure that there are many different kinds of physical surfaces, live surfaces like roots of plants, so that complex biological processes go on. And because of that, a facility like this can take a cancer-causing compound and actually break it down and render it harmless. It's this kind of ecological engineering that permits us to tackle head-on problems of toxic compounds, problems of carcinogens. And there are even plants in here which have specific affinities for toxic heavy metals like cadmium or lead or something like that. Those plants are located here in the second stage the engineered marshland, where there are carefully selected cattails, reeds, and bulrushes known to absorb the remaining toxic chemicals and heavy metals through their roots and render them harmless. And in these marshes crawl Todd's secret weapon, tiny snails, which he discovered actually eat and digest that scourge of modern pollution, sludge. I had no idea that the that the tiny little ubiquitous snails that you see in streams and ponds would actually do more to solve, has the potential to solve more of the problem, the nation's sludge problems than anything else. To see these little creatures gobbling up the sludges and the organic slimes and what have you in a facility like this is, was a huge surprise. I knew there would be some strange actors in this ecological play, but I had no idea that it would be the snails. In the final purification stage, what is known as the fish room or clean room, fish eat the last bacteria and algae that have flowed downstream. And plants such as papyrus, mint, and tropical palms also serve as a natural filter. So this is the end of the process. After four days, the front room with all the bacteria and the algae, the marshes, 
and all the plants and the fish. We've taken out all of the sludge and made a pure, clean water and without the use of any chemicals and in a beautiful setting. This greenhouse can take care of only a small neighborhood of about 150 homes. What Todd envisions are whole complexes of greenhouses for a city such as Providence, built for a fraction of the cost of new conventional treatment plants. On this pond on Cape Cod, John Todd has created another living machine, using the same natural processes we have seen in the greenhouse on this raft. Here to clean up the chemical pollution from a landfill, poisons that had formed a thick toxic layer of sediment on the bottom. The major components of this living machine also are plants, bacteria, snails and sunlight, along with wind. A couple of years ago, we started a very unique experiment. and We placed on this end of the pond three small windmills. And these windmills floated on the water and they had under the water little rotors. Powered by the wind, these rotors churned up the toxic sediments, bringing them in contact with the raft's natural filtering processes. We also added beneficial bacteria and we added some minerals to help the process along. And we found over the last year and a half that the pond has begun to repair itself. It's now considered by the health authorities safe to swim in. Typically ponds like Flax Pond are not only used for recreation and as a source of water supply for the Cape Cod, but uh, they're also used by the cranberry growers to provide irrigation at certain times of year and to provide flooding when they harvest the crops. So that it's important that we keep our ponds really clean so that our cranberries are clean. The alternative to what we're doing here in Flax Pond is, is a bit grisly. It would involve coming in with heavy machinery, destroying the vegetation and what have you, and basically digging out these sediments. Since they would be toxic, you'd then have to park them in some kind of hazardous waste site somewhere in New England. And the cost of doing that would be measured in tens of millions of dollars. Whereas the cost of doing it ecologically using living machines would be measured in hundreds of thousands of dollars over the lifetime of the project. Winner of Discover Magazine's Environment Award and the EPA's Environmental Merit Award, John Todd has given us a glimpse into a new era of wondrous machines. A new age, a new science. He has given us a new respect for nature's potent healing powers. And most important, his technology gives us new hope that finally we will find the way and the will to clean up our polluted waters. The proceeding is from the pages of Discover Magazine, America's leading science monthly.